Hello, KL. I hope you are all well. Uh, I would like to read The Speckled Feather. And it's written and illustrated by a woman named Johanna Rias. And you can see by the cover that it's about an elephant. And, oops, <laughs> one, two, three birds. And some of you may know from doing, reading some elephant books or watching some nature shows that birds travel on the backs of elephants for a couple of reasons. You can imagine the weight of an elephant when it walks through the jungle or the savanna. It stirs up a lot of dirt and dust and that dirt and dust goes all over the elephant. And with that dirt and dust comes insects. So these birds love to eat the insects and they get rid of all the insects on the animal's backs, on the elephant's backs, and they also get rid of the dust at the same time. Another thing they do is they eat parasites that often lodge in the animal's skin like fleas and lice that could really bother an elephant. So they take care of that too. But when I read this book and I did a little research, I found out another thing that birds do for elephants. Um, you imagine, you, you can imagine that the size of this elephant, there, won't, there wouldn't really be any predators, right? I mean, other animals don't really go after them to harm them because they're so large and also because they travel in herds, so there's so many of them, other animals would never even go near them. But lions and tigers and hyenas sometimes go after their young. So another thing these birds do is from being perched up top, they can see through the jungle grasses if there is a predator and they sound the alarm so that the elephants, the mature elephants, can protect the young even further. Well, that's an amazing story in itself to me. But let's go ahead and read The Speckled Feather. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Okay. Elephants live in the savanna. They are so big and gray that you can see them from miles away. But if you dare to go closer, you will realize that someone else is there too. On the back of the elephant sit birds. High above the savanna grass, they are safe from predators. What's more, they can see quite a distance from the elephant's back. Once upon a time, there were three snow white birds that lived on the back of an elephant. He called them Ade, Emem, and Nuru. Ade was the quickest of the three. Emem liked to climb all over the elephant's trunk and Nuru found the fattest insects in the gray folds of the elephant's skin. There were never any quarrels on the elephant's back. One day, a dusty wind blew through the savanna. A particularly strong gust carried a bright speckled feather over the grass and as far as the herd of elephants. where Ade, the fastest of the three birds, grabbed it out of the air. What a gorgeous speckled feather, said the delighted Ade, and he stuck the feather into his own plumage. Then he flapped his wings and flew far away from his friends, sat on the elephant's head, and poked his tongue out at the others. It's my speckled feather, he crowed. I'm the first bird on this elephant, and so this feather belongs to me.
Around midday, it got so hot in the savannah that the elephant stopped at a water hole. Ade leaned quite a long way forward to see whether he and his feather were reflected in the water. Look how handsome I am, he boasted. I'm the most beautiful bird in the whole savannah. I want a speckled feather too, whined Nuru from his place on the elephant's behind. Me too, moaned Emem. And in any case, it would look much better on me than on Ade. If we steal the feather, you and I can share it, suggested Nuru. Emem thought for a moment and then he nodded. In fact, he wanted the feather all for himself, but he kept quiet about that. Very softly, the two birds hopped toward Ade. But then, thieves screeched Ade, you want to steal my feather. While the birds were quarreling, the elephant raised his trunk and huffed and puffed and blew and blasted the birds right off his back. Enough. The elephant stamped his foot angrily. The three of you will get rid of this feather and will be friends again. I won't let you sit on my back until you do. I don't know. This feather isn't doing one bit of good, is it? It turned them into boastful, conceited, selfish, and greedy birds. Emem and Nuru nervously stretched their necks up over the grass, but the backs of all the other elephants were occupied. Throw the speckled feather away, begged Nuru. Then we can sit on our elephant again. But Ade refused to give in. My feather stays with me. Can you imagine having a fight with your friends over a thing, like a feather? Night began to fall around the elephants. The three quarreling birds could be heard over all the savannah. Lured by the noise, something approached in the dark. Can you see what it is down there? Oh, I think it might be a hyena. The shadow came ever closer through the tall grass, but Ade, Emem, and Nuru never noticed the glowing yellow eyes. On the contrary, the squabble became louder and louder. Then suddenly, oof, oh no. A large gray, powerful something hit the wild dog, bang, on the chest. The elephant swung his trunk and hurled the wild dog away in a high arc, and the speckled feather went whirling through the air as well. Yes, that does look like a hyena or a jackal.
Thank you, said Ade, Emem, and Nuru very quietly to their elephant. With outstretched necks, they stood there waiting to see if he would say something. The elephant looked down at his three friends for quite a long time. Then he nodded. No more quarreling, he asked. Promise? No more quarreling, promised Ade, Emem, and Nuru. And no more speckled feathers. <laughs> well, it, at least they learned their lesson, didn't they? You certainly don't have fights with your friends over things. And they all realized at the end that their friendship was much more important than a feather. <laughs> okay, KL, I will be reading a few more stories for the next few weeks, but kindergarten is almost over for you. So I will see you next week. Bye-bye.